Off the top at six, flashbacks to the 2000 presidential election. Tonight, Florida's Senate seat could be heading for a recount. Under state law, a machine recount is mandatory if the winning candidate's margin is 0.5 percentage points or less. And that's where we stand right now. Rick Scott leads Bill Nelson by 0.38%. And so far, Senator Nelson has not conceded. We want to start our coverage with CBS 4's Joan Murray. She's live tonight in Orlando with what Senator Nelson's campaign had to say about this today. Joan? Well, Bill Nelson never showed up for his watch party here at the Embassy Suites in downtown Orlando election night. He hasn't been seen in public since Monday, but he has been very visible on paper, releasing statements today and asking for all the help he can get on this recount effort. The nasty Nelson Scott Senate race was too close to call, and Bill Nelson refuses to call it quits, saying in a statement, We are proceeding to a recount. President Trump, who campaigned for Rick Scott, singled out Nelson in a lengthy midterm post mortem. This is a man who's been in office for like 44 years or something. This is a man who's like a professional at getting elected and being at office. So he's not, Bill Nelson, not easy to beat, okay? And but they had a lot of celebrity coming out for Nelson. They had everybody coming out for Nelson. And Rick Scott won. The Donald Trump factor is an important one. That helps explain why Bill Nelson may have fallen short Tuesday. And Broward College professor Kevin Walsh said even if there is a recount, Nelson needs a miracle. It's probably not likely that there'll be enough votes for him to overcome that 30,000 plus deficit. Then there is the cost of a recount. Nelson said Scott outspent him by more than two to one during the campaign. Nelson has taken to social media, setting up an emergency response recount fund, saying in a tweet, we know Rick Scott and the GOP are about to pile everything they've got into this, and I need you right here with me to make sure every last vote is counted. It is going to be a lengthy and very expensive effort. Now, here's how that potential recount would work. By Saturday, all the counties have to submit an initial count, and from that, uh, it'll be determined whether the margin is slim enough to do this machine recount. And then further than that, depending on what the results are, it could ultimately lead to a hand recount. That will take a long, long time. Anybody's guess where this is going. In Orlando tonight, Joan Murray, CBS 4 News. Thank you, Joan. From Joan in Orlando, let's head to CBS 4's David Sutta in Naples. And David, have we heard yet from Governor Rick Scott? He is missing in action, too. He actually appeared uh, last night, obviously, to accept uh, what he thought was uh, basically him going to the Senate. Uh, he did that with uh, not a confirmation that he had won. At least only a few media outlets at that point were confirming, and he only had a 60,000 uh, vote lead in all this. By uh, early this morning, that was actually cut in half, and he was in that area where the recount was going to be automatic. Now, as we move forward here, he is already, his campaign has put out a statement, basically Basically saying that this is over, he's won, but it's looking like this recount will happen. The real question here is whether it will have any impact on the outcome, and so far it's looking like it won't. We will change, like we did in Florida, the direction of Washington, D.C. Governor Rick Scott declared victory just before midnight, taking the stage without Senator Bill Nelson conceding the race or the state being called for Scott. I didn't go to Tallahassee eight years ago to be everybody's friend. I'm not going to D.C. to win a popularity contest. I'm going to D.C. to get something done. At this moment, Scott's campaign was up about 60,000 votes, not outside the norm for one of his elections. He's had a history of winning by just 1% of the vote. As his supporters reveled in the win, it wasn't quite clear that the race was over. Election offices across the state continued to update vote totals throughout the night. Around 3 a.m., Scott was ahead of Nelson by just 50,000 votes. By morning, it had dropped to 30,000. Under Florida law, if the race totals are within a half of 1%, a statewide recount must be ordered. Nelson technically could waive his right to a recount, but this morning he made it clear he was not going to do that. Scott's campaign put out a statement saying, quote, the race is over. It's a sad way for Bill Nelson to end his career. He is desperately trying to hold on to something that no longer exists. Let's get to work. 
Florida Senate race was the most expensive race in the country. It was also the closest in the polls. And now it appears it will take the title of the longest, as it's still not over. Here come the lawyers while we're all focused on this word recount. The fight is actually starting tomorrow. Canvassing boards are going to start looking at what is called a provisional ballot. That is what happens when you go to a precinct and some sort of discrepancy happens there. Whether you're not registered, something, something you're disagreeing with, you fill out what's called a provisional ballot. That is taken to the canvassing board and they decide whether that vote is going to be accepted or not. Both sides are expected to have representation there. Both sides will be arguing for a vote to either be counted or taken away and not counted. So expect that fight to start tomorrow. It may go into Friday before that unofficial result is all tallied up on Saturday. If the Secretary of State decides to issue that recount, uh, it will be a machine recount likely, at least what the numbers are looking like right now. And what that means is taking the actual ballot that you filled out on election day or early voting or absentee and running it through the machine. They will actually run it through all, you know, 8 million votes we're talking about here and see what the numbers are. After that, it gets even more complicated. Let's take it one step at a time, though. We're live in Naples. David Sutter, CBS 4 News.